good morning, afternoon, or evening, whatever time of day it may be. Uh, today, we're going to go ahead and get this drawing ready for transfer. And I saw that there was one question about my stump. Uh, so the stump, I to be honest, I really don't know um, where, what art store I got it from or what type of stump this is. Now I know that's probably not very helpful, uh, but if you notice, the stump is pretty worn out. So I think over time they become softer. Uh, at least from my experience, they just become a little bit easier to use. So nothing very special about this stump, uh, but it did, I think it's softer over time after uh, so much use. So one thing I want to address with the drawing, or maybe a couple things I want to address with the drawing before uh, transferring it is actually the, even though I mentioned in the video where I drew out the uh, clothing, I mentioned that the perspective made the hand look a little bit big when the camera was to the side over there. Um, right now the camera is pretty close to being centered. I still feel like the hand might be a little bit large. And um, someone pointed out on my Instagram that this leg may be a little bit large. And I'm also noticing that the uh, jawline could have a little bit more specificity to it. So we're going to be correcting some of the, the mistakes in the transfer drawing. Um, but we're gonna actually do that on the transfer paper. So let's go ahead and put the transfer paper over it first. All right, so we have the tracing paper over top of the drawing now. And luckily, it actually fit most of the drawing. Now, I'm not a perfectionist. I know that I'm not gonna be able to transfer this little piece of the chair. Uh, the chair, by the way, I drew it on my own separately because I, I didn't think that it would even be worth it to try and draw out all of these little details in a video. But if you wanna see how the, a chair can be drawn out or painted in a similar perspective, that is the values to be exact. Um, I released the video on the value study yesterday. So in yesterday's video, you can actually see how the chair uh, was painted in monochrome. But in any case, the tracing paper is this brand right here. So in case anyone's curious uh, as to what tracing paper I'm using, and again, as always, if you want to know exactly what materials I'll be using, you can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box below. So now the camera is back to the to my left hand side, um, and I'm going to be applying some some little marks. So I know that it's still a little bit blurry to see, uh, so just bear with me with this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in the outlines. So I'm just using a burnt umber pastel pencil and oh by the way, so um, if you're going to be transferring a charcoal drawing, so remember this is uh, this drawing has been created with charcoal, you really want to spray fixative on it before you put tracing paper over it. Now I don't know how well the fixative that I put on will hold, um, but I'm hoping it'll it'll do its job and the drawing won't get destroyed. So if you don't use fixative, you will run the risk of the charcoal underneath of the tracing paper smudging. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this section up until I get here where I need to make the correction. You know, on second thought, I think I'll just film the uh, portion where I go over the outlines. So again, remember that this is the angle between the eyes. So like I said before, the Transfer really does give you the chance. It really does give you kind of a second chance when it comes to drawing. So let's go ahead and double check the proportions, just the big shape proportions. So here we have the tear ducts, right? Uh, here's the back of the eye on this side and the back of the eye on the other side. And of course we have the angle in between the eyes. I want to make sure that these angles correspond to one another, which they seem to. The next thing to check is the distances between the eyes. 
these distances should be uh, roughly equal to another. So the distance between the eyes is roughly the length of one of the eyes if the model is facing you directly. Now our model is in three quarter, uh, but fairly close to, I'd say the model is in three quarter closer to being centered than profile. Um, but anyway, all that means is that this distance here equals this distance, which equals this distance roughly. But notice it's a little discrepancy here, which is actually okay in perspective because we're seeing more of this side of the face than this side of the face. So I'm just gonna go along with the outline and you can follow along with me so you can know exactly which shapes, which lines and which angles uh, I'm taking down for the transfer. Hopefully you can tell. And I'm using a burnt umber colored pastel pencil. I just like the, I like the color, to be honest. So here's the topmost region of the upper eyelid. And remember the model is looking down. So here is the topmost portion of the upper eyelid for the other eye. Let's go ahead and trace over the shape of the eyebrow. So this really does give you a second chance. I feel like I'm going to repeat myself a lot. So sorry if I repeat the same thing a little bit too much. So here is the boundary of the cast shadow. So this is the concavity of the eye socket here. Tapers down into here. And then this, all of this appears to be in shadow here. And then of course we have the eyebrows themselves. Now a little trick to make sure that the eyes are looking in this in relative same uh, position is this distance here. From the corner of the iris to the back of the eye, you see this distance here? We want this distance to be roughly the same. So the corner from the tear duct to the iris, we want these distances to be about the same. And um, so whoever is wondering about my calipers, my measuring tool, this is uh, this is my second favorite one. It's by some brand, Pacific Arc, um, but it's just a regular caliper that you could find almost anywhere. My favorite one is the one with the numbers that you saw in the start of the under drawing or the transfer drawing. But uh, I left it today. I actually just came back from my art group. I run a Tuesday morning portrait session with a live model every Tuesday. So you're you're seeing this video on Wednesday, but I'm actually filming it on Tuesday. But in any case, I left my uh, favorite measuring tool at the school. And I'll get it back, no worries. So here's the corner of the the nostril. Here's the root of the nose. Now the model is looking down. So this usually from the hairline, actually I made that line a little too low. So usually from the hairline to the eyebrows is one third and then the eyebrows to the root of the nose is another third. 
should be fairly close with this one, but the nose should be a little further down. See that? And even still, I could raise that a little bit. Uh, it's a very classical thing to elongate noses. So if the nose becomes a little bit long, it's okay. As long as it's not, say, all the way down to our shoulder or something. So now we're just very carefully mapping out the contour of the cast shadow from the nose. This is the cast shadow of the nose, form shadow on the nose. And let's also check our verticals. So the corner of the tear duct should meet the nose, and it does. Over here, it appears to be all right. Now let's go ahead and draw out these symbol shapes for the mouth. Start with two marks here. Pathway between two points is a line. So let's make sure that these lines coincide with one another, and they do. Next thing is to make sure that the root of the nose, if you drop a vertical following the center line, should match up with the top, the middle top of the upper lip, and it does. The model's lips are a little more round up here, whereas I had them a little more rectangular initially. So I guess you could call that another correction. Middle of the mouth right there. And then here's the bottom. You don't need to outline every specific thing for the mouth. You remember how many times I had to move the mouth in the other portrait? Same, same kind of thing could happen, and it's all right. Now let's carefully follow along the side. Is a corner of the jaw. Want a very clean contour. Notice how the line though is not razor sharp. Um, on purpose, I don't have a very sharpened point, just so I don't have a, a line that's just too sharp. Now we have the bottom of the chin, the angle for the jaw, and I'm going to stop right there. So that point right there is the point that I need to make the correction. So before the jaw was up here, really round, but actually, the so this was the angle I had before. I know it's hard to see on the tracing paper. I apologize for that. But this was the angle we had before. Remember how in the transfer drawing, the line was kind of ambiguous, a little bit too perfectly curved. Um, well, in fact, this angle needs to come out a little bit further, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So first of all, let's pinpoint exactly where the corner of the mandible is. So here, that would be the corner of the mandible, whereas before I had it, not, not terribly off, but before I had it somewhat over there. So let's go ahead and make that correction. There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit more accurate, but of course that's what the underpainting is for. If we have any mistakes here, which I'm sure I do, that can be further corrected in the, the uh, sorry, the underpainting. A little mark here for the zygomatic. Cheekbone goes all the way up here and over there. So that was the minor correction that I wanted to do for the mandible. It's the corner of the neck. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and outline the rest of these shapes until we get down to the hands. All right, so we've made it all the way down to the hands. And here is where another major problem is going to happen. Well, it's not really a major thing, Kind of a minor thing that can turn into a major thing if I don't address it. So about this much, tiny, tiny, uh, 
the hand is a little bit big, or should I say the hands are a little big. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to uh, address that. Now, of course, I don't claim to have all the answers. Um, I never will, but this is just a way that I correct my own uh, drawings before transferring onto the final canvas. So let's start off with this line and let's keep this constant. So let's let this not change. Now we're going to look at the things that are going to change. So for instance, the hand is just too big. I mean, maybe in the photograph, it's a little distorted. I don't know. I'm not going to blame the photograph. So what I'm going to do is you see the outline here. Hopefully you can see the boundary between the fingers. I'm going to go ahead and outline the fingers, but I'm going to project them a little bit inwards. So this is what I mean. So here are the fingers. Here's the boundary for the fingers. Now I'm going to be making them about the same. So the contour is going to look about the same. It's just going to be, this portion is going to be pushed inwards a little bit. See that? Whereas this is where it was before. So this is how far the finger went out before, and now we projected it inwards. Hopefully that's visible on the camera. And now, same thing with the other finger, pushing this in. Trying to be faithful to the same outline that I had before, just projecting it inwards. And then on this finger here, same kind of thing. So down to about there. And now I'm going to do the same kind of thing with the other hand. So projecting the line inwards to make the hand or the shape of the hand appear a little bit smaller. So we just shaved off quite a bit from the outline. Same thing with this corner here, just projecting it inwards. And so now I'm just going to fill in the rest of the shadow shape. So this is going to be the boundary, or the, you can call it the terminator line for the shadow. Here's the, the palm, the back side of the palm of the hand moving all the way down here towards the, uh, the knuckle for the pinky, wrapping all the way down here. And this shadow is going to come in, go flat here, and then wrap around towards the pinky. Now. The, there's a lot of paintings, you can look, think about a John Singer Sargent, um, where the hands are almost just a few brush strokes and from a distance they look incredibly um, convincing. And the way really that anyone can achieve that type of effect is towards understanding the basic shape. 
but we're doing the same kind of things that uh, John Singer Sargent did with his paintings. It's just that with him, he did it with large uh, brush strokes. But he had the same kind of formal training as all the other academic artists. So just to get an idea of what uh, the hand's going to look like now with this little change, I'm actually going to go ahead and shade a little bit for the hand. So again, remember uh, the model's right hand is underneath of the model's left hand. So that creates this little shape here. So now I have the camera pretty close to the center, um, but I'm actually gonna have to move it a little bit to the side, but this is now what the outlines look like. So bear with me here, just moving the camera to the side just so I don't get in the way of the shot. So now with the hand, the hand, now with the leg, uh, someone on Instagram pointed out, and again, if you wanna see uh, more of my artwork more often, for instance, tonight I will be heading out to a figure painting group, actually in pretty much an hour, I'm gonna be heading out to a figure painting group. So if you wanna see more of that, uh, you can always check out my Instagram account but in any case uh, someone on Instagram pointed out that this leg might be getting too large so I can see it now uh, so perhaps right there it may be getting too large by about I don't know maybe that much so just like we did with the hand I'm gonna go ahead whoops see look at this <laughs> backwards I'm gonna go ahead and find what I'm gonna hold constant so that I'm gonna hold constant. This, however, I'm going to project inwards in order to shrink uh, the shape for the leg. So let's see, the back of the knee, I don't know, let's say that the back of the knee, the tendon is around here. Now, of course, the model's wearing jeans, so I can't really know if the tendons are back here, but Anyway, I still see kind of the backside of the knee there. Let's call that the backside of the knee. And we're gonna project this shape inwards a little bit. So what do you say we project it, I don't know, this much? What do you think? Maybe that's too much. And if it is too much, that's what the underpainting's for. Again, each stage builds onto the next. All right, so that is how we decrease the uh, the width of the leg. Hopefully, that worked. So now here's the corner of the leg, and of course the other leg is underneath. So the model's left leg is underneath here. So. Here we have just a little shape for that. So that about does it for that simple correction. Hopefully it looks a little bit better. Let's go ahead and put a cast shadow on here. The cast shadow that we drew out earlier. Very simple shape there. So I think that's about good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and outline the chair. All right, so now that we have all of the outlines for the chair, as well as for the simple shapes of the portrait. I think that the drawing is now ready for transfer. So tonight, uh, like I said, I actually got to run out to a figure painting group. Whoops, I think I missed this corner. So I have to run out to a figure painting group. I have a painting I've been uh, working on for a couple weeks now. And again, if you want to see um, my other work that is off camera, uh, you can always go ahead and check out my Instagram account. Um, I'm also thinking of creating a materials video. I've had a lot of questions on the um, types of materials that I like to use and uh, my my thoughts on the safety of the materials and uh, just 
information on materials in general. So I don't know why I put that shape for the hair. I don't need it. I will figure out where the hair is once again with the underpainting. But anyway, um, yeah, I've gotten some questions in the past about, or I have received, sorry, some questions about um, materials in the past. So if you want me to create a video specifically on uh, the paints, the quality of the paints, the canvases, the linens, and all that stuff, uh, just let me know in the comments section, and I'll see what I can do. And of course, um, I think two days ago, I uploaded a video on how to create your own do-it-yourself oil painting panels, which is exactly the same type of panel that I'm actually going to use uh, for the painting that we'll transfer this onto. So for tomorrow, we're going to transfer this onto a panel and create the poster image onto the panel, which is just a simple light and dark shapes. And then we will get into uh, rendering some of the forms uh, with the grisaille, also known as underpainting. And of course, I'm forgetting the bottom of the chair. If I would have left it how I was, how it was, uh, we'd kind of have a, we would have had a levitating chair, which would be kind of interesting as well. But um, I guess I should put in the bottom of the chair little shape there. I'm gonna let it run off the page. And the leg on this side is actually being covered by the model's legs. We're seeing a little bit of the other leg from the back corner there. Yeah, I think that should be it for the chair. And with that, I hope that this video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. I'd like to thank you all so much for following along with this new daily YouTube video format where you get to see me work and develop artwork right in front of you pretty much every single day of the week. So I wish you the best. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you again tomorrow.